Hey guys, it's Pinder back here in the Tower Studios, part two of Jason Weimer today. Final reminder, as it is Thursday, Saturday is the Roar to Explore at Tower, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep. It is going to be all kinds of amazing vehicles you can check out. Free admission to the public. If you want to register your vehicle to get into the dance of the check out how nice my car is, slash truck, slash Jeep, uh, just 20 bucks and proceeds going to Brown Baggings Lunches for Calgary Kids, which is a great cause. Uh, sadly, too many kids in our city aren't going to school with a lunch. This is a program that certainly alleviates a lot of pressure on that. I think we can all get behind kids having a lunch to eat at school. No doubt about it. Food trucks, best in show prizes, raffles as well. Free to the public and 20 bucks to register your own vehicle. You can see the QR code there if you've got a Dodge Ram Jeep or Chrysler you'd like to show off and you'll be even able to check out uh, Dean's Nation Jeep. Boom, boom. The boom Jeep. It'll be uh, all there on Saturday located at Tyler uh, Tower Chrysler, not Tyler, Tower Chrysler down by uh, the Anderson Station on McLeod Trail South. Now to part two with Jason Weimer, Rhett Warner, and myself. And so only two years in Florida, and then... No, it was only a year and a half. It was only a year there. Because then... So uh, Keenan got fired mid-summer, and uh, Rick Dudley came in. And so it's that next summer I got traded to... Yeah. So I was only in Florida for a year. Branislav Maisy. I, uh, for some reason, you are an islander to me. I don't know why, but that... I, I How long yeah. were you in the island? Like, like a year and a half. Yeah, but I feel like, but you guys had a good team then, didn't you? Make the we playoffs had and had a yeah, we lost to Ottawa. That's right. Yeah, we had a we had a good we had team. Some teams then too. Yeah, yeah. Hosa Havlat, Phillips Redden, that crew, yeah. right? Chara. Yeah. Well, if yeah, yeah, that was fun. Talk about a Talk about big. Oh my god. Yeah. Huge. But yeah. liked the island. Played you with an what? old junior teammate, Izzy. And yeah, got to play with Izzy. Uh, great group of guys there. Eric Cairns, Webb, and Webby, uh, Sean Bates, Mark Parrish, Adrian O'Coin, uh, Ricky DiPietro, Gar Snow, Osgood, like really good group of guys that we got along really well. We had a pretty good team, um, not great ownership. And right. so then we ran into that problem where it was, we're not going to pay. So dismantle and they're kind of still in the same boat yeah so it was uh it was that was unfortunate actually because it was a it was a good place to play um you know now that they've got the arena issues what did you, too. that was the old rink too yeah, like how rink. cool was that like it was awesome. it's yeah. terrible but did you that's what i just did like i used to like going in and playing there but i was there for 24 hours yeah. and then you're gone no it was terrible I and mean, the locker rooms were the shits the ice was the shits it was it wasn't a good rink you know, now that they've got it all sorted out, obviously it's much better. Um, but fun place to play, like where we were good, good, yeah, great guys, in good communities to live in. Yeah. Like we were living in supported, uh, lot passionate great, fans, passionate fans, and you've got the Islanders Rangers. Yeah, that's right. Which the best rival you for you? You played in the Tampa Philly the first time Tampa made the playoffs. They played Philly. Yeah, it was an absolute. Bloodbath. Bloodbath. It was insanity. I remember watching. It was my first. And they would have eaten that up in Philly. Like, oh that's my God. Just, well, how many yeah. people were in Tampa? It was at that shitty old, the, the, the baseball stadium. The baseball stadium. I think yeah, like 24,000 or something. Yeah. Oh, I think it was more than that. I think oh. it was like 30 something. It was crazy. It, it was, it was. Ulanov crazy. and Lindros and. Ulanov. Well, even when Uli, Uli was in, I think it was in Winnipeg before. And he had hit Lindros oh. a couple years before and her, banged up his knee. So there was some bad blood there to start. And he had his number. I mean, he had figured it out before Stevens figured it out that Eric had his head down a lot. Yeah. And so, and he could hit, Uli could hit. Yeah. And he stepped up and tattooed him a few times, which just started these melees. Yeah. So, like, I mean, we had full on line brawls and a few of them. Well, those Philly teams weren't going to be intimidated. And no. you guys, like, we're good. Well, and that was the Legion of Doom, right? Yeah. So that was Lindros, Leclerc, and Renberg who were unstoppable. Like, and the only way we could think of was, we're going to have to get in their way, yeah. <laughs> which didn't slow them down a whole lot because they would just yeah. steamroll over us. 
Um, but so it, it, I think we went to six with them. Yeah, you lost the game six at home. Right? That's right. And, and it got but, ugly at the end. It got ugly at the end. So I, I don't remember the score, but we were down by a few. And Lindros had had enough, and it was okay. Ooh, enough. It's my turn. No. And so he came in there. And he dumped remember, it in. Oh, he? yeah, he dumped it in. Iggy went and got the puck, and he just steamrolled him. Got, and before Ulanoff was up, Lindros was throwing. And, <laughs> and like haymakers. So I remember Chris Gratton and I were on the ice, kind of looked at each other like, oh, Uh-oh. shit. Grab someone. Yeah, get, get him. Like, <laughs> yeah, get him off. Get him. So I remember grabbing onto his arm with both hands and him throwing me with the punch. <laughs> I don't know that I was slowing him down much. Like, he was... It was he was an insanely strong man, and so anyway, it was a full yard sale. So we all get booted out, and I'll never forget this. Ulanov comes into the locker room. We had the uh, jersey like shopping carts. It was like the plastic Walmart shopping cart, and he was all pissed off. So he came into that locker room and kicked the shopping cart. Well, his foot went through it. So now it's like a crab trap because <laughs> his foot's through it, but he can't get his foot back out of it. So he's laying on the ground, and now he's kicking with the other foot. We'll be damned if the other foot doesn't go through. No. <laughs> so he's got both his feet stuck into this shopping cart, and he's on his back laying there. And Gratz and I are standing over top of him, but we are not can't get anywhere close because he's kicking with his skates. So we're like, hey, stop kicking. So he finally stops kicking and thrashing around, and he's bleeding everywhere. <laughs> he's probably zippered for like 15 across his forehead. And so Gratz and I are – calmly kind of getting his feet unstuck from the shopping cart and grad says in just a very plain voice like so did he hit you with any <laughs> <laughs> just blister i was like oh god that was funny <laughs> yeah, but the rivalry funny. in new york then the rivalry in new york, i mean uh, for you. well you know the battle of alberta is the battle of alberta but the teams weren't great back then you, you didn't see the best of it right you we didn't, didn't know no you know but Edmonton had a not bad team uh, when they had like Wait and Garen and yeah. uh, Pronger. Like that, they, like that. So that was the 06. You're right. Your first year here, they were good. They yeah. went to the final that year. Yeah. That's right. Like so, they were pretty decent. Um, so there was some b- bad blood, but it wasn't enough hate. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like it was hate filled. The Rangers Islanders, the ice. What's going on in the ice doesn't matter. What's going on in the stands? is crazy like there's full-on brawls in the stands like these people watching the game hate each other and so uh, there was numerous occasions at both rings where there would be a timeout or whatever is going on and you look up and there's an entire section brawling like just going at it and like it would be like hey start the game and everybody's just sitting there like holy jeez it's insane up there and actually i got cut at the end of a game at msg and so the doctors had taken the medical cart off out of the locker room. And I got cut right at the end of the game. And so the trainer's in there and the doctor, and he comes in, he's like, Weems, it'll take me 20 minutes to get down to get this cart and get back. Or you can just walk down there with me to where this little medical room. I'm like, okay, fine. So we walk down there and I'm laying there getting stitched up. And all of these guys that were in this brawl up above are now in this room with us. And this one guy, he's missing all his teeth. Oh. Another guy, he's got zip, he's cut everywhere. And they're trying to convince this doctor that's sewing me up to sew them up so they don't have to go to the hospital. <laughs> and the doctor's like, well, I can't because I'm not insured to work on you here. And the guy's like, dude, I'm here like, on a bachelor party or something. Like, <laughs> if I got to go to the hospital, like, oh. you're, my, my night's over. Like, come on, you got to do it for me. The doctor's like, I can't, I can't. The guy's like, I'll give you 50 bucks. The doctor looks at me, he's like, 50 bucks. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing it for 50 bucks. The guy ended up, I think he got up to a couple hundred and finally the doctor was like, okay, lay down. I'll get you. So he, <laughs> after I got my zippers, he sewed this poor sap up. But uh, it was, those games were fun because it was, there was a level feel it. of energy in the building that was exciting. And so that, that those were cool. The third annual Honda and Acura Show and Shine is coming to Village Honda. Save the date, August 26th, a Saturday, as the finest Hondas and Acuras in the city will be on display. Family friendly and no charge for spectators either. If you want to register your vehicle, it's only 10 bucks. Love it. Visit Village Honda for more information and to register if you want to get your car in there. You can also RSVP 
all at villagehonda.com and proceeds go to the amazing Subi Foundation. And a reminder, they do have new in-stock inventory on the ground. Start your automotive adventures at Village Honda, where new vehicle pricing is MSRP. Get a trip voucher for two to Las Vegas when you sell Village Honda your car. All makes, all models, appraisals are complimentary and no obligation. Make money today by selling your car to Village Honda and saving yourself the hassle of selling privately. Located in the Northwest Auto Mall, villagehonda.com. Did you know that Village Honda has a huge selection of used vehicles? All makes, all models, and for all budgets. With over 70 on-site and access to over 400 more vehicles in their dealer group, make Village Honda your one-stop automotive destination in Calgary. They're definitely worth the trip. Village Honda in the Northwest Auto Mall. Vina Nova is Calgary's lab-grown diamond specialists. Vina Nova specializes exclusively in lab-grown diamonds, and you can see for yourself why the hype is so huge. These diamonds have the same chemical composition and crystal structure, and in fact, often superior quality to that of a mined diamond. The savings of lab-grown can be astronomical, in some cases as much as 80%. It just makes sense. Visit their downtown showroom on the second level of Stephen Avenue Place, or Check them out online at vinanova.com. So leave the island and go to Mini. Leave the island, go to Mini. And um, one of the most iconic coaches of all time. Jacques Lemaire was coaching wow. there. And, and you've always said the best. The best. Hands really? down, the best. Like, he was the best coach. Just X's and O's or everything? Everything. Okay. So, I mean, mostly X's and O's, yes. But if he, attention to detail. Yeah. Like, detail is everything. He's, and his point was... Everybody's good. If we're better at the details, we'll win. Yeah, he was right too. And and he is right. Like he was very, very we called him the mad scientist. Like he would watch video before video was even that big a thing. Yeah. And when he'd see something, he'd giggle, like in his little Found French it. giggle. Ha ha. And then we'd all come in and he'd sit there and show us. And we're he we're looking at the video he's looking at and he's questioning us. You see it? You see it? You see it? see what no i don't know it looks like we're good he's like no we need your stick it's got to be on the other side huh okay i mean just small small details where like what on that one he was talking about there was a d-man behind the net i was on the right side it was a controlled breakout mm -hmm. and so the d-man behind the net is a left-handed shot okay so he's like he's gonna want to come out his left side so that he's on his forehead sure I was standing, I shoot left-handed. I was standing with two hands on my stick. I'm in the right position, but I had two hands on my stick. And so he's like, if you take your hand off your stick and just move it over here. A little influence. It'll influence him to leave onto his backhand, come up behind the net on his backhand. Now we got a backhand pass in their zone and off we go. I'm little like, stuff. Like, but, little but stuff. huge to him. But but he's... And right. And right. Because you could have coaches, I don't that would try and find something. They'd almost try too hard. And it wasn't, you're always like, that's not going to make a difference. That's not a difference, right? Like, it's fine if you say that, but something like that. Something. I think Jacques, he this, got was, this made a difference. Yeah. And if you had enough little details, it makes up to a big thing. And, you know, obviously he knew what he was doing. He was a pretty damn good coach. Well, they went to the finals once in, in, in Minnesota, but the, the, the cups in Jersey, like, yeah. Those details they add up. Well, how many did he win? Like, I think he won six as a player, didn't he? Six, well, a, like, I think he had nine or something. Jeez. I can't remember what it was, but yeah. it was hands full. Like, yeah. you know, it was quite impressive, but yeah. <laughs> and so, the other story I need you to tell is Dig at Christmas. Oh, god, Alex Dig, hi, pit. so his first oh, overall in Ottawa, yes. huge yeah. bust. It, it didn't work for whatever reason. And you saw him in Mini. I saw him in Mini, and you know, the Dago, he. Love him or hate him, you knew what you were getting. You know, there were guys again that didn't like yep. him, but probably didn't didn't understand him. I, I, I said him one time, well, "How come you've got this reputation of being so selfish?" He's like, "Cause I am." <laughs> like, well, all right. <laughs> That's He's fair. like, "Yeah, how can you be pissed at him?" Like, okay, I guess you are who you are. So we were living in the same apartment building, and uh, I invited him. Over. My family was coming in for Christmas, so we invited him over for Christmas dinner. And he showed up at the door with a bottle of Opus One wine. Okay. And so my mom answers the door. And as anybody kind of coming into your home, she kind of reaches for the bottle of wine like, oh, thank, oh, thank, thank you. you. 
Yeah. He's like, no, no, that's for me. <laughs> you guys can drink your own swill. This will be mine. <laughs> So and that was him. <laughs> yeah, and that was him. So I'm like, oh my God, like this is this guy for real. So anyway, we sit down for dinner and he's got his bottle of wine like in front of his plate. And that's like there's other bottles, but he's got his. And it was lucky I actually had an empty bottle of the same stuff, like underneath the sink or something. So I was like, oh, perfect. So we got up, went to the bathroom. I changed the bottles. And he came back and picked up that bottle and it's empty. And he kind of looks at me like, and he was mad. Like, are you freaking kidding me? You guys drank this? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, he was. What kind of Christmas who, do we have it? Who drinks somebody else's wine? Like, what's wrong with you people? I told you. I was like, yes, Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm like, oh, my God. So I hand him the bottle back. I'm like, you are such a boob. And so. I hope he laughed at least. Oh, well, kind of. Once he got it back. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, once he got it back. So I can't wait for practice because I can't wait to get to the ring to chirp him and tell everybody about how big of a boob he is. He beat me to it. <laughs> he got to the rink and told everybody himself. So he <laughs> he, didn't, the butt of the he didn't care. That's he awesome. didn't care. I, I liked him. Like, you know, he was, uh, he was a different cat, you know, but you talk about pressure. Yeah. And the pressure that was put on that kid at 18 years old to come Ooh. in and save Ottawa and get the first an expansion franchise and a yeah. big contract that everybody in the league was pissed off that he got French speaking yeah. in a French town. He, it was, that was a tough oh, the year that. before was Lindros the year before was Lindros. And so you're thinking That's you're going to have to say you're kind of that big an impact. Was it Lindros? It would have been Lindros close. was 91. Was he 92 or was he 93? Remember. I think he was 93. Either way, either the, way yeah. either the, way. in recent history, there's some franchise altering players that go at one and Dag just flopped. No, yeah, no question. But he's funny. <laughs> I wonder what a player he would be like in today's game because he was a fast, fast, you speed know, guy. He's another, he didn't have the chemical makeup to be a stud. You know what I mean? Yeah. He could be he, your second or third best player, maybe. Or sure. No? But, he, yeah. you know, he didn't have the drive, the passion to be the guy that's going to drive the bus. You know, if he was going to come along behind in a supporting role, perfect. But, yeah, I don't I don't think he had what it took to be a, a, the number one. And so end up in mini. Decent seasons there. Yeah. Year and it, a half. Again, it was only there for a year. Then the lockout. Then the, then the lockout. So, and then. Then you came back here. were fighting. Wow. Well, but you were deciding between going back to Mini and coming back here. So I was unrestricted at the end of that year. Uh, lockout year. Lockout year. And so Mini came to me and said, you know, would you like to stay? And Daryl had approached me about coming back here. So it was, I liked Mini. Mini is a crazy hockey community. You know, they support that team. Yeah to the core so it's it's a great place to play they got a great facility i really enjoyed my time there um but this was kind of home right being from kimberly knowing the guys i'd played for two setters before yep. i was like and daryl uh rico was here preston was back here so he i'd had him with brian before and rich he was he was like yeah you got to come back so this was after your guys' 04 run. So we were, yeah. So it was a lot of momentum. A lot of yeah. momentum. I'm watching it on TV, going, okay, like this could be fun. This will be fun. And I'll fit in. I know half the guys on that team, and I'll fit into that lot. You would have been one of those guys. Like, yeah, absolutely. You fit the DNA of that team. Right. And yeah. so I was like, okay, this is perfect. Like, yeah. And so ended up signing and coming back here. So, and then that was. So, you would have been teammates. And finally, after finally, the, the vending machine in Japan, you yeah, finally get to play. We finally together. get back together. Yeah. Finally get back together. So, it was, uh, yeah, it was a long, long way back together, right? I know. Finally back together. <laughs> what was it like? What do you remember about Weems? I remember in? Weems not getting to play enough. No, I. We had it. We had a fucking tough team that year too, though. Oh, we were less tough. like Cy was tough, and McCarty was there, and Weems was there. like the. We just had a lot. Marchment was there. Dion was come Marchment, in. Like yeah. it was, there was depth to the toughness. Yeah. Maybe not too heavy, heavy, heavy heavyweights, heavy weight, but, but yeah, we we could go, we could fight. But it, you know, so that was but a it lot was ending year. too. That that I. Mm -hmm. 
my criticism of Daryl at that point would be that we went to the finals and we're interviewing you, so I should yeah, talk whatever. about that instead. But my criticism of Daryl at or that time and place was that after we'd gone to the finals with a young group of guys, he felt we had needed to get older. Yeah, more of and the whole league had said, "We're yeah, going yeah. younger." You you have. And we did the opposite. That year off came at the wrong time for oh, you guys. Because sure, I think still. also, correct me if I'm wrong, if you had a year left that went into that locker, you just got washed out, didn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there would have been guys that would have returned that, oh, they're not free agents, they're going to yeah. leave. Yeah. Well, and so coming out of the lockout, he signed McCarty. He signed Tony Monte. Uh, I'd signed before the lockout. So we, like you say, we had gotten older. Um. But for some reason, which I didn't understand, he and I did not, or he didn't like the way I played or whatever it was, because it was from day one, hmm. from training camp on, I was the whipping boy. And I don't know how many conversations I went in and talked to him and been like, what, how have I, created like, what, this? what is, what have I done? What's happening? It, well, day one, game one. We were, I can't remember who the hell we played. Probably anyway, Van. No, it wasn't Van. But we went to, it was Columbus. We played in Columbus. Mini. We, put, we played a mini and then went to Columbus. That's what it was. Played a mini. I played. Played okay. Like, we'd. I think we'd lost or we might have tied. I think we tied 1-1 one, one or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Get to Columbus and I'm a healthy scratch. I've never been a healthy scratch in my life. I was like, healthy scratch. Like, oh, shit. Okay. So Rico and I went in. I'm like, I'm gonna want to see what last night's game. Like, let's go over. Let's go watch this. Yeah, like I because I didn't think I was that bad. And so we went through the video clip, and Rico looks at me, he's like, Yeah, you had a really good game. <laughs> I was I'm like, so what's going on? He's like, Yeah, yeah, just ride it out. So and that's what I did. I wrote it out and I asked him for a trade quietly three different times. Where I went in and was like, "Hey, if this doesn't work, yeah, clearly that's I'm not fine." And you've got me in Cy and Donovan and McCarty and all of these guys, that, of guys that are doing what you're asking me to do. And so, if you think that they can do it better, that's fine. Let me go somewhere else. Now we're to play. Yeah, we're coming off a lockout. I need to go play, or I'm done. Yeah, and yeah, he just wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Um. And then finally, well, I asked the first time I asked for trade was November. So I asked November, December, January, February, and he traded me at the deadline. Late. Late. Yeah. Jersey. That, and uh, I get a, I get a phone call at 305. So after the it's passed. After, after the deadline. And not from Daryl. Daryl's too busy. He couldn't call me. So I get a phone call at 3.05 and they say, yeah, we just wanted to let you know that we think we traded you. <laughs> we didn't want you to see it on the ticker. I'm like, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, we had a game that night. Well, if you don't hear from Lou Lamarillo, uh, the trade didn't go through and just show up for the game tonight. <laughs> Be ready to play. I'm Excuse like, me? Yeah. I was like, well, is Daryl going to call me? Uh, he's pretty busy. Okay. So Lou called me. I went and got my gear and got the hell out of here. So I, that wasn't handled very well. No, you know, you, I least. think there's a professional courtesy that could have been extended there. Yeah. yeah you know, but it, you know, he, he was, but at that point he was the coach GM. Yeah. Which was stupid, stupid. Too it's, too, it's too much. Yeah. You can't do it. You know, you, this isn't a, that long ago. No, like, this no. is not the fifties. Like, no. where, right. Like this is the, there are kids all over the world playing that are high end in a billion dollar industry yeah. and you're yeah. coaching when yeah. you need to be GM and, or you need. Well, to and, and look, maybe if you're the most collaborative person on earth and you're taking in opinions from everywhere, you could maybe that wasn't him either. He no, closed the GM door. It was, he was doing both jobs all on his own. I don't, I don't care for your opinions. I'm doing both jobs. You know, as a coach, you have to create some rapport and relationships with your players in order for them to like you to want to play for you to, so that you've got their respect. So you have to spend time and understand them as a GM. You don't want to do any of that. Yeah. You want them to be pieces of meat that I can, your assets, I can't your get assets, attached to you. I can't get attached to you because if the I deal is an, the deal, I don't need an emotional attached side of this. Exactly. You have to be very black and white. So in order to do both jobs, 
it, it's damn near impossible. Yeah. I, I don't know how anybody would think that you can be emotionally detached when you're coaching. Yeah. It doesn't work. No. That's like, I've never thought about it that way, but I think you're bang on. Yeah. Like, and that's why it didn't last long. Like it was the next year play fair was behind the bench. Yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah. one year basically. Yeah. Um, and I think they're still recovering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, like he did a lot of damage in that. I don't know if it was a year or two years that he was GMing. You know, some of the deals he that, made three or four. was, yeah, that got old, too much term, too much money, not a great draft draft track record at all. Traded a lot of traded picks, a lot of picks, older. Like, yeah. you, and it, you know, you can blame Kipper too. Well, that was the next thing. You, you know, it was he, all taken care of because Kipper kept you in it. Kipper kept you in it. Kipper kept you close. So there was a misread on really how what close you, you were. Yeah, that's fair. And you weren't in a Monte away after all. No. <laughs> Albeit like late in his career, Monte. Prime Monte would have helped a lot. Yeah. Yes. Prime Monte was pretty good. He could skate too. Yeah. Big clap bomb off the wing. But no time in Jersey either. Blow your knee out and that's blew it. Blew my knee out in the playoffs. So got traded there at the deadline. Uh, blew my knee out in the playoffs. Um, Where are they at in their life stuff? Because are they contenders at that point still? Or is it they, just after the cup runs there? No, they were still contending. Um, you had John, Martin Broder. Yeah, you okay. had Marty so, Broder. You had Gianta scoring 50. Uh, Scotty Gomez yeah, okay. getting 80 points. Um, Elish, El Elias. Elias was there. You know, there were some. They won they, not long after that, didn't they? I thought they won one more with Marty before. They kept churning coaches yeah. and they had a couple little runs there. They, 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 they for they, a while there, they were just anyway, around. They, yeah. yeah. Like Zach Breezy was there. You know, they had a, it was a good team. Like they're good and, and relatively young. Um, yeah. So, Blew my knee out in game six against – no, game four. We swept the Rangers, and then well, – How was that? That's not nothing. That had Rangers. to be a yeah. fun series to be part of. That was a fun series to be part of. That 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 was cool, but the Rangers weren't very good at that point. That was the – They got in. They were overpaying all those old guys to be around. That was the Yager yeah. uh, Not a lot of heart and soul. Not a lot of like, – <laughs> I remember it was game one or two, and that was it. Hit Yager, just bump That's into him, bump into him, good. get him disinterested. And it was like he got hit once or twice, and it was he just turned it off. I'm really? Like, Thank you. Might as well turn to stick over. And he was <laughs> he did it, zero bad. zero interest. Um, yeah. So that was about it. Blew my knee out. Kind of got misdiagnosed around the Lamarillo group. Um, Weird. Yeah. He's an interesting cat, that one. So I went in and got an MRI and they told me, you're fine. You got a kissing contusion. Your knee joint is opened up, slammed back together. And so basically the two sides of your knee are bruised. And when they touch, it hurts. But but you're fine. But you're fine. You're No structural damage, it just hurts. You should be fine. We should be able to tape it, put a brace on it. You're good to go. Okay. So we played Carolina in the next series. I We lost in six. I played in that series and then came home and was working out and this just didn't feel right. I, my leg was kind of looping and opening and it just felt gross. So my brother's a uh, radiologist. And so uh, I called him up and was like, Hey, I'm going to need an MRI on this thing. So we went up there and he scanned it and I went into the little black room where they were looking at the image and he started laughing. He's like, you want the good news or the bad news? It's like good news. It's like your leg shouldn't fall off. Oh, <laughs> and bad news, everything else is fucked. So ACL was completely gone. Meniscus was completely shrouded. Like both my other uh PCL and LCL were grade threes, and oh. so needed complete reconstruction. So, so I sorry, how did it happen? <laughs> Tom Pody, the intimidating Notorious. figure that he is. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would say MSG ice had a lot to do with it. I was going, got to center, had the puck and just kind of bumped the puck in and, and he stood me up yeah. and I was turning to go to the bench. He stood me up and just leaned back and pop. That was it. It's it was pretty innocent. It was completely innocent and there was nothing to it. It was just the way and the way my weight was. Just the way the weight. Just, yeah. And again, I don't know if I hit into the ice too deep and it just twisted it and popped. So 
went in, in the locker room. And it wasn't like it was excruciating screaming roll around pain, on the yeah. screaming pain. Like I skated to the bench. It was right at the end of the period, walked down the tunnel, put tape on it and finished the game. Like it wasn't, you know, it didn't balloon like swell like you would think it would. It was just, I don't know, keep going. <laughs> okay, so so you're back home. You've realized what you were told had happened is not what it happened. Not quite what happened. And so then what happens then? So I call Lou and said, hey, I went and got a second opinion on my knee. Now, before I can say what's wrong, he asked if he would like his surgeons or if I'd like to go somewhere else to get it fixed. <laughs> so he knew. Yeah. So he knew. So I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to let your guys touch me. <laughs> so ended up going to Cleveland and got it repaired. But the shitty thing was instead of getting my knee done in April or May, I got my knee done at the end of July. Yeah. So instead of be being skating ready, in August, instead of being ready by October, I'm ready by January. So now we're navigating salary cap issues. I was making a million bucks and I haven't played. So we get all the way. It's now January. And I'm making a million bucks and we're right on the cap. So he's got to take two guys off of the roster, which would have been Dan Makachur and probably Mike Rupp, and send them to the minors in order to insert me in. And we're in a playoff race. And I haven't played since May the year before. First time on a new knee. I'm not making that move and, if I'm the GM. And, yeah. and, and. Had a lockout year. Had a lockout year. Only played probably 40 games, 50 games a year before. So, that. 40 so in the last games two last years, I've played three, yeah. 40 games. So, anyway, it, it, it would like, I mean, I don't blame, blame him. him, but he went about it wrong. He didn't come out and say, hey, I can't take these guys off the cap to put you in here. Maybe we'll throw another year on your deal. It was just. We're just going to stick you over here and forget about you. Well, and again, to your to the point you made earlier, if he diagnoses it properly, you've got a fall decision, I, not a mid-season decision. Exactly. And at that point, you can be traded. Other things can happen more easily. A anything could have happened at that point. So it was, yeah, it was, that was a little bit difficult to deal with where, you know, at, I don't know, I think 31 or 32 years old at that point, you're like, holy shit, I am just me. Like it doesn't matter to anybody what's going on. And, you know, he kind of been through it all. And that was my yeah. hand wiping moment. I was like, I'm done. Like you both had your careers end in that fashion. And and most guys don't get to pick how their career ends. Like uh tomorrow, well, I guess we're we're way down. The we we sat down with Lanny. You, you get to lift the cup and retire. That almost never happens, yeah. right? Like Ray Bork, that almost never happens. What most often happens is what happened to you guys. And I know you had said it. You were just done with it for all. You didn't watch games on TV for a bit. You needed to just stop with hockey. You didn't even want to see the game on TV. Were you the same way? Uh, I don't think maybe that much. Like, I would still watch it. I'm still a fan of the game. I had no interest in playing it. I didn't, like, it was probably two years before I even started thinking about playing, going playing beer league or pickup. It just, it was... You know, something that you have kind of that you love that you know you had the passion for that you, it was all you did, it was who you were, and then it's taken away. And you're kind of almost feels like it was stolen from you. Like I, I don't, you know, so you have a level of anger towards it where it was I was not at the game, just at the how it unfolded. How it unfolds and the bullshit and the got, politics. Again, I'll go it. back to the fact that I got another year or two after you did, but hardly played. There was a lockout and we were told you, what well, we were brought up team, 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 team. Yeah. There was no individual world that you could even think about. If you were an individual in that era, you were not part of a hockey team. No, they got rid of you. So you were taught to be a teammate and you're taught team first. And then you're part of the union. While the union relies on your part of the union. We got to pull together. Bob Goodenow is the guy, hates Bettman. We're gonna, we got a war chest, we're gonna bow. If lied to by your union and telling you we should we're gonna make this all back. Yeah, we don't give in. They will they'll crater, there's no cap coming. We refuse to take us out. Blah 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 blah. Stars over Kansas. Yeah. You and you're like, well, I'm a dumb hockey player, but this is it's worked for me so far. Being a good teammate, I guess this is what you got to do. 
Well, you miss a whole year of your career yeah. there on a fucking lie, to be quite honest with you. Like, we could have negotiated that deal the year prior to the lockout. The one you ended up getting, you could have got, but without a lockout. Yes. So you, you, you got up, what the owners wanted missing a year. That sucks. So not only do you miss that year, but because you miss that year, you're probably, you know, there's the trickle down from that is huge. If you don't miss a year because of lockout, oh. your whole trajectory is different. Like everything, everything changes. Different. Everything changes. So you have. So my point being, to me, that's where the cynicism started yep. for, and maybe the disdain for some of it was like, well, this is a bunch of BS. I thought I was the good guy in doing and living and being this way. Well, now you're just fucking taking advantage of me. Yeah, yeah. and that was two kids fighting in the sandbox. Yes, those you know, two. like yeah, they didn't give a shit about what was really going on, and I don't know what Bob's end goal was. I don't either. I don't. I don't know how he ever expected to get to where he was. Yeah, where where point. where he thought we were getting to. It was no hard cap, but he lost that. What <laughs> right? But what he painted to us about the hard cap is a far cry from where we sit today. Yeah, right. Like we were painted that. You know, we come in with this hard cap. You're going to have your top players getting paid millions. Yeah, they're going to get 20 and you're going to get half a million. And everybody else is going to get chicken feet. <laughs> and, and we're not master negotiators. And we, I didn't even put thought into it. Like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah, that's because I'm, I'm the grand. guy that's going to get yeah. screwed here. Like, I, I'm, oh, but I'll there's, pull the line. Oh, but you can put other stipulations in there where there's minimum salaries and blah, they can, the top guy can only take a certain. Oh, uh, so you could have yeah. massaged it a little. Yeah, it was, you know, and I guess bad on us that we didn't get some more opinions on where this should go. And we just took his word. No, well, I mean, like to your points, your, your teammates that stick together, you listen to your coach. In this case, the guy running the union was your coach and you listened to him. And he may have philosophically had high ground, but it was a group of millionaires fighting with a group of billionaires. And I guess in yeah. hindsight, it's easy to say the billionaires, we should have knew they were going to get what they wanted. Well, they were going to get what they wanted because at some point, and it was, I mean, we had players, you know, kind of walking going, we're going to take a cap because it's happening. I'm making 10 million bucks and I just lost 10 because we lost here. I'm not losing 20. Yeah. So we're going to get a deal done. And so we had guys working yeah, behind I, the scenes. I can look in the mirror now and go, you are an idiot rat. Like, oh yeah. That was dumb. You should have thought more about it. <laughs> well, and been more involved in it, yeah. you know, but like you're saying, we had a guy telling us this is what it's going to be. And we weren't supposed to be getting taken advantage of by that guy. And well, I don't know that he was deliberately taking advantage of us, but he was misleading us. He sold you on something that didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. But and wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know whether he was smart. He, he should have been smarter because I don't think he lined his pockets. Like, it's not like we're talking Alan Eagle. No, he's not yeah. stealing. He's you know, just he, making yeah. fucking poor decisions. It's just poor decisions. Because he didn't like bet that was the problem. It felt like a personal vendetta between it, those two. It came down to two little kids fighting in a sandbox yeah. and we all paid the price for it. Yeah. But, and I, I to go back to where we started on this. I, I think that's exactly right. Cause that was kind of coming off the heels of like, so my career ending was off the heels of the lockout. And it was after that lockout, it was different. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy to be jaded. If you lose yeah. a year of salary, you were sold something that didn't happen. You see it as a huge business where you're just a piece of meat. And then you get misdiagnosed when you know they do yeah. it. Like, I, I think it would be really easy to be very jaded and cynical. At that well, point. and so when I re-signed here in oh, five, four, or six. Oh, five or six, oh, five. Uh, so I signed a three-year deal, then a lockout. So I lost a year and we had a 25% rollback. <laughs> right? So if you'd only waited like a few months, you, oh, you wouldn't have the 25% rollback. Yeah. Least. So you get 25%. You sign a three year contract that just That's became the other a, thing. It just became a two year deal and you're making 25% of it. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. ding. That was, yeah. I was kicking the nuts. <laughs> and, and then not soon after that, you get screwed on an injury diagnosis and it's like that's affecting your life i didn't yeah. care no and you know what that part i don't really care about like the like i mean you mean affecting your life like how you walk around from day to day because you've got injuries, injuries that may hurt your life 
we signed up for that when we started playing. That's fair. You know, like there's an inherent risk to playing hockey, to playing any sport in any profession. If you want to get paid to take those risks, if you don't, then don't play. Yeah. You know, I, you know I, the concussion things and the other guys coming back saying, well, I didn't know that I'd get a concussion. You were signing up to get punched in the face. You know, that's not good, right? Like yeah. that's probably going to come with it. So I don't, I don't, I don't have an animosity or uh, pissed off at the game or people of the game because my body hurts now, maybe a little more than it would if I'd have been a school teacher, but I also wouldn't have got to do a lot of the shit and I owe the game really everything I have in my life to this point. I owe it to playing hockey. So, you know, as you get older and wiser, you can kind of reconcile, reconcile and navigate a little bit of it where it's like, okay, yeah, that pissed me off, but not pissed me off that I, the question, you wish know, I, I have, hadn't done it. Yeah. The question that you always put to it, would you do it again? hundred percent. Oh yeah. yeah. I'd do it different. Yeah, I would probably do it different, but would you do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. The real yeah. question for both of you is if you could do it again, would you hit the beer vending machine in Japan? Absolutely. <laughs> I believe I would. I, yeah, I would. A hundred percent that beer vending machine would get hit, yeah. but might have hit like the gym after. Or right. Something. Maybe just, like just tried that on for size. A little bit less of that, a little more of that. Not less, just different. <laughs> different. That's the full circle on it. We can keep going, but we are right back to that vending machine in Japan. Love it. It was a good spot. The Hearing Loss Clinic was opened in 1993 with a simple mission. Make a positive difference in the lives of our clients. It's never been about hearing loss or hearing impairment. It's been about empowering you to be socially active or more connected with loved ones and confident in every aspect of your life. Men and women of all ages and, of course, children can suffer from hearing loss, too. There can be serious health risks that are linked to untreated hearing loss, and you can get a peace of mind at four Calgary locations. Shaughnessy, University District, Northwest in the Crowfoot Business Center, and in the North Hill Professional Offices. If you've got issues with your hearing, come visit one of their four Calgary locations for an evaluation. They're the 2022 Chamber of Commerce Professional Services Excellence Award winner. Visit one of their three locations in BC. You can find them at Cranbrook, Creston, Fernie, Golden, and Invermere. Famous people that have swung by the hearing loss clinic, John Huffnagel, Lanny McDonald, Haley Wickenheiser, Peter Marr. It's worked for them and it can work for you. Check out their social streams on Twitter at The Hearing Loss or on Instagram at The Hearing Loss Clinic. The original Bonton Meat Market opened its doors way back in 1921. And all they've done since then is provide the highest quality product and treat customers like family. The very best AAA Alberta beef, free range poultry, grain fed Alberta lamb, milk fed veal, and fresh Alberta pork. Once again, Bonton was voted the Calgary Consumer Choice Award winner for best deli meat market. Find them at 28 Crowfoot Circle Northwest or go to bontonmeatmarket.com. Uh, and I do a couple things. So you got two boys, they slide into Rhett's three boys. You guys yep. see a bunch of each other. Uh, your name always has come up over the last decade working with this guy. We know you're you're a bit of an outdoorsman. You like to hunt, if I'm correct. Like, what is what do you love about life right now with with the the kids at that age and and having some spare time and being a pal with this lunatic? Well, it, you know, it's fun. Like with two boys, uh, it, it's great because you get to do a lot of the things that you like to do. You know, so we like to hunt and fish and golf and play hockey. And they like to do the same stuff. So, you know, fishing trips and hunting trips are now with my kids and a lot of times with my dad. So we've got a few generations yeah. out there. So you get a lot of time to, you know, spend some time with the kids. You know, everybody gets busy doing shit and you kind of make excuses why not to. So us being able to do all the things that we like to do together is great. You know, and now they're Here's they're a question. Golfing. Here's a question. So you've got two boys. If you had two girls, how different would it be? I don't like to think about it. <laughs> I mean, maybe they like hunting and playing hockey. You never know. Yeah, but, they might. But, but no, honestly, yeah. and and part of the reason it's it's an observation from, and I think we've probably just talked about it. I've there's no science to it. I've not done a research on it, but I'm guessing that fellas, NHL guys that have boys, tend to be involved in the game less professionally post-career than guys that have 
Because they're busy with their kids hockey. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I, I'm with you. That'd be interesting to look at. Because, I mean, that chews up the majority of my well, winters. In, in your sure. mind, in my mind, are you going to stay in the game? Well, do I stay in the game or do I give my time to my kids? Yeah. And their hockey. And their, not, that they're, not that it's a career path for them, but yeah, you it's a direct involvement yeah. with them. Well, it, it's the time you get to spend with them. Yeah. You know, like we've talked about it lots, so like both getting back in the game. Okay. Do you want to go and coach or be involved in something in a junior hockey or any, whatever? And it's like, well, what do I got to give up? Yeah. I'm not, not if it means sacrificing coaching my kids team, because I enjoy that. You know, I like being there. Yeah, I might like coaching them. junior, but I'm coaching my kids. Yeah. It's we're not far off here. Yeah, and yeah. you can't do the, the challenges. You can't do both. You can't be riding a no. bus for seven months in the Western league and coach your kids. You just can't. No, you can't. There's not enough time in the day. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't. Uh, if you had girls, I think that you'd have a lot more white hair. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, that would be a very stressful. <laughs> I would be very owned. stressful. If I had daughters, I would be owned. Like I would, oh, it would I it's, feel like I have a, just, I can fake it in my brain that I have some control yeah. over the situation at home with, if it was all girls. But Hands I've got, up. I've got nieces and it's like, if they want something, they come see uncle Jason. Like, hey, <laughs> oh, yeah, no <laughs> problem. Yeah. You, you betcha. Yeah, you're my favorite. My kid, kids will be sitting there. I'll be, they're my, you're my favorite. My kids are like, well, what the hell? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you had a daughter, yeah, I'd be, it would be tough. It's fine. Between rep boom, myself, I think there's eight kids, seven are boys. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we don't have a lot of daughter stories, but we've well, got a few, but generally speaking, it's a, it's a lot of sons on the show. When Rhett and I get together, we'll have a few buddies go down to the Rhett's so, Lake or whatever. Yeah. So we'll have, you know, four or five families around and it'll be one or two girls and like 10 boys. Yeah. It's like now the girls don't want to come. Just or, rolling their eyes or, at the idiots. Oh yeah. Or, or dad doesn't bring them. They're all getting to be 14. Yeah. Where's your daughter? She's at home. <laughs> I come and hang out with these ramrods. Play, man. Thanks for coming in. Anytime. It's good seeing you guys. Wait, Thanks. I want to. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Let's let's just do a, a quick five minute breakdown. Thoughts on the Flames. Yeah, yeah. Going okay. in oh, yeah. next year. The uh, Conroy's in. The uh, lot of change. You know, a lot of change. I think Connie's great. Happy for him. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, I think he deserves the opportunity. I think he's been handed a handful of shit to try and yep. make soup Tough out of. Spot here. Yeah, it, it, he's going to be. He's got. He's got to make some really hard decisions that unfortunately are going to somewhat pave his path. He's either going to come out of this and everybody's going to say, wow, this is a great GM and he's going to make a career out of it, or he's going to come out of this and be the GM for three years and nobody's going to see him again. So it's going to be, I think, a real difficult spot that he's in. Um, we'll see how he does. The team, I don't know. It's a tough watch last year. Do you year, buy right? that they're good or do you buy that they're bad? Or I mean, they're, they're right on the cusp of making the playoffs. That's probably what they are. They're not any better. Yeah, like, I mean, they're not going to come out and win the West. No. You know, so we're talking about somewhere between 6 and 12, right? Oh. And if they play well, if they get good goaltending, maybe they get up to 6. Maybe they finish second or, or third in the division. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, you brought up a good point the other day. We were talking about the team. They're all coming up unrestricted, right? So everybody is six gonna be, guys, UFAs. The Tapoli got moved, but you still got Shillington, Tanev, Backland, uh, Zadorov, I believe, as well as the two big ones, which are Hannafin and and Lindholm. Lindholm. So you got five traditionally. Or six, Five or six guys that are looking to have career years so that they can get Good the big time ticket. to have one, fellas. Good time to have one. Um, but that doesn't help Conroy. That does that makes no. Conroy's position worse. worse. So what happens at the trade deadline when they're in a fight for it? Are you going to start buying? When you've got five guys that are unrestricted, you can start buying and then lose everybody. So it's or, a tough spot if they're good. Can I'm you sell? You. The easiest thing to do is if this team's horse shit, we can all look at it and say they're no good. Trade everyone. Literally. The hardest thing to do is if this team is competitive at the deadline and everyone's like, I want to see what that cap's going to. I don't really want to resign right now. I might, but not now. Oh, nobody, it, nobody's agent will let them resign right now. Yeah. It, like, there's Unless a lot of like Stamkos hasn't resigned in Tampa. I think he's staying in Tampa. Even the people where you know where they're going aren't signed yet. Even if you back up the Brinks truck, yeah, which 
then maybe, but now you're going to have to overpay. Well, and then you've just, yeah, you've just yeah. sewered. And that's where they're at with Lindholm. That's where they're at with him, right? So, He'll sign for too much money. Yeah. Are, are you going to give Lindholm eight? And he probably wants something that starts with a nine. I guarantee nine. Backlund comes back for three years at the same. Yeah, but project. that's a bad deal. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Bad. So where are they going to be? They're going to be right in the middle. Uh, I think they're going to struggle to score goals. I, you know, I don't know. You traded away your leading goal scorer. You didn't replace him with any. Who's going to fill the net? I don't know. It'll yeah. be. You need a bounce back from Huberto for sure. That's for sure. Well, you know, there's got to be a bit of a bounce back. Mm-hmm. But Huberto was 115 points once. Yeah, he's a, been a 70 to 80, 90 point guy a few times. Mm-hmm. So a bounce back is 70 to 80. Yeah. Not 115. No, that's I'd the agree out, that. That's the outlier. I think you you would take 80 point Huberto right now, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd take 80 points, but like that. And, because that's a, how bad he was last. At 115 points, he only had 30 goals. And it's not happening again. Like, it's I'm not sorry. Ha- and just, that was a one-off. That's your career year. But who's going to fill the net for him? Yeah. Because he's a passer. He's not going to get 30. You know, a good year for him would be 80 points with 20 goals. first. We saw it all last year. Yeah. yeah. So 20 goals, 60 assists. You'd say great year. Yeah. Who's, who's scoring, scoring the those 60 goals? goals? <laughs> yeah. It, it is – a thing and like Kadri had a very frustrating year, still had 24. If you told me that Dubé and Manjapani and Pelche and Cornell, like, sure, but that's again, that's by committee. None of yeah. those guys is Phil is going to score 30. I don't think you've right? got a like, lot of guys that projected should project out 20 plus, maybe yeah. one or two or 30. Maybe you know, a Lindholm, maybe Lindholm, maybe a Kadri. And a cadre. Even Lindholm doesn't get to 30 very often in his career. No, well, I was playing probably. with Johnny, sure, but yeah. yeah so, agree. you know, but those would be the only two guys where you could say, okay, 30 could be in the cards. Yeah. Like, Man I don't see Man Japan. Two years ago, but everything went right, it felt like. Everything went right. Like, I mean, I don't know what his shooting percentage was, but it felt like it was like 50. At the first half of the year it was, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like. Or so, what was it, on the road? Yeah. It was, it was one of the other. The splits were nuts to you. So, right? I, I don't see, you know, I, I watched, I love the kid. I think that. He plays. I like how he plays. Plays hard. No plays, you know, hard on a sleeve. He goes out there and works his bag off. He's got good skill, but he's not a thirty goal guy. Yeah. You know, he's twenty, and it's the same with Dubé. Dubé has a good year. He's twenty. Yeah. So you got lots of guys, like you say, by committee. Yeah. You need something. You need some injection of skill. The the the, the point you make. It's the best and worst for the Flames, and we've talked about it constantly. Six free agents. That can be a great thing because all those guys are looking for contracts. But if they have a contract year, that puts you in a spot where you're in a playoff position mm-hmm. or at least fighting. And what in the f are you doing? Well, like you get a great return for this guy, but we're in a playoff spot. Yeah. How how's how's the owner going to react to you trading your leading scorer at the deadline? Yeah. Yeah. So Connie needs to spend between now and March paving the road to trade everybody. I think. Win or lose, and the fan base, the ownership base, you better start. <laughs> he's got to start putting the bricks in place. That regardless of where we're at, we need to sell. I'm telling you, those guys that he's got are really attractive pieces. Who would not want to add Chris Tanev to a playoff roster? Oh, absolutely. And I understand the injury thing, but when Tanev is like, he screams at him at the deadline, playoff built yes. defender. Who wouldn't want to add a Michael back and like, oh my god, like third line, put him in a shutdown role, wherever you need penalty kill. Like you're talking about the types of players that are the final pieces for contenders. But the problem is they here it might not be the contender. Right? Wouldn't you say that this team is full of second and third liners? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like on any contending team or even playoff team, is anybody on the Flames playing on the first line? Well, I think the Huberto one's tough because he was a point per game player for four seasons in a row. And last year he looked so bad. It is hard to believe he but, was for half a decade, a point per game guy. But was he the best player on their team? No, he was not. He he played on a line with Bennett and Duclair. He didn't play with Barkov, but he still put up those screens. So I, I get what you're saying. Um, Lindholm was, but only when he was with Johnny and, and either Kachuk. Monaghan or Johnny and Kachuk. Cause he had those two big career years. Yeah. And so it, it, I'm I'm kind of with you. Like, there's a lot of guys you'd love to be your second and third best player. Well, when you talk about it, was you going long now? But 
you just said it. When you trade those guys, those are pickup pieces for a team to take them over the edge. They aren't their top line. Yeah. No. You, you go You're already trade, a contender. You go and trade for those guys. Those are the kinds of pieces that are like, holy, look at the depth of those this squad your, now. Oh, my God. Yeah, those yeah, are your guys. depth guys. Yeah. Those are the guys that – Second and – Like, really good third line, good. second line. Vegas loses a D-man injury. We go get Noah Hannon. Yeah. He's going to play 25 for on our second pair. Yeah. yeah. That, like, th that's the – They're not driving the bus. You know, no, they're, they're great – great fillers you know what would you call it? tertiary pieces secondary pieces yeah. sure that's and that's where, where i look at this squad and no offense to huberto he's not a cornerstone he's not a centerpiece that that's the guy i'm building my franchise around yeah he well, is, they, they, florida proved it they picked everyone else instead of him to keep right? well they could have kept him and i mean you get kachuk i get it <laughs> they made a pretty good move you know kachuk yeah. looked pretty good last year yeah. and i mean again Tree's in a pretty tough spot there. And he looked like he did pretty well mm -hmm. coming out of that. Just Still got a first in there, too. Got a first in there, too. You know? Don't extend them. That's all. <laughs> yeah. And and so if they are going to be competitive, it, it's going to be a by committee. They're going to have to get goaltending. They have to be much better defensively than they were. And I still and I think they can do it for a year. I just don't see long term. Long term. Yeah. No. If you keep the Oh man, we're having a great year. We're going to make the playoffs. Oh, we got to sign all these guys. Okay, we're going to sign them now. We've overpaid them. I don't think three years from now that that team is well. You there's look a at, lot. That's a long time out. You but. look at teams that you're excited about. You look at Ottawa. You look at Buffalo. You know, teams that are on the upward yeah. trajectory, and you look at their core mm -hmm. and what they've got. They've got a stud young D man and one or two studs up front mm -hmm. that they're building their franchise around. I don't see that here. They're older, right? They're older. And so maybe you'll see that down the road from a Pelche or Coronado and this Hanzek kid will probably be here in two years, but that's not now. That's no. And, you know, the hard part is you got to be shitty to end up being good. Wow. But I, I, I don't mind that because I like the idea of increasing my odds of yeah. picking a stud player. Yeah. And to do that, I got to be shitty. You got to be shitty. Yeah. And that's where you know, we struggled here for so long is they haven't pick. allowed it to be shitty. Yeah. So sell it off. You know, if that's what you got to do. And I mean, if there were time to do it where nobody could really bitch when you've got six UFAs coming. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, man, like if they want to be good when that new building opens, that's going to be real good for business. When's Don't that? be shitty. When, when is that happening? <laughs> Four or five years. That's about how long it takes, right? I mean, <laughs> You know, the, it's it's not tomorrow. You no, do have no. a window to like, if you want to turn it around, you got a few years. And if you want to be good in a new building, you're going to make way more money than you are at the Saddle Dome. In mean, fact. Well, there's no question. You know, and it's, unfortunately, you got to take a dip before, because hanging in the muddy middle, great. You know, maybe got an outside chance of making the playoffs, the building, but the fans are also going to get tired of it. I think they are. Yeah. I think the fans have had it now. Yeah. I think they saw this is last call for me with the, in terms of where I think the fan base is at. I think you're going to see smaller tennis numbers. And if this team wants to be good, they might win them back. But if this doesn't work, there's going to be all kinds of people yelling for a rebuild. I, like I would think the vast majority of fans would want that. I feel already like it's, it's getting a lot close. Of people, yeah. Look, I think even the people that aren't calling for it right now could be convinced of it. It's not yeah. the, this is not the worst yeah. decision. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you don't like it, but it's not the worst decision. Well, is there anybody like, do you get excited to go? Not last year. The year before was pretty fucking exciting. It was a different <laughs> team the year before, though. Yeah, oh, yeah no. Yeah. I, I mean, you're right. You know, you'd go watch Johnny and you'd go watch Kachuk and go, yeah. Okay. It's yeah, offline. Yeah, that's good. But I, I'd go watch 115 point Hubert. I don't know that I'm going to see that in Flames. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Fingers yeah, crossed. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Thanks. Okay, okay boys. Appreciate it. Have it's a. Excellent finish to your summer and uh, knowing yeah. the, the number of uh, hockey dads we have, it's going to get busy here. So soak up the sun and make sure you're uh, ready to get on the yeah. jets and spend a bunch of the winter drinking coffee in a rink. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> He's only coaching one team now. He's Parking lot beers. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you can't find a vending machine. <laughs> yeah. Thanks boys. It was great. Thanks. Appreciate it. The word is out. Mad Rose Pub in Royal Oak has become one of Calgary's best pubs, and it's no secret why. 20 beers on tap, kid-friendly Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, daily specials, lunch specials, some of the best food you're going to find in the city. 
period. Burgers, pastas, steaks, full entrees, and proud to serve one of the best and most talked about pizzas in Calgary. Summer's here. Come enjoy the brand new patio. Check out their website. Maybe order some takeout. Madrose.pub is the website. 15 Royal Vista Place is the address. It's Madrose Pub. Hey guys, it is Pinder again with a Betway Bet of the Day. What is hotter than Leo Messi with Inter Miami? Everyone loves Leo Messi, and I do too. No, 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 no spoiler alert there. Uh, they are plus 700 to win the MLS Cup, to win the league, and they kind of have the best player in the league, not kind of at all, and uh, boys are feeling good at Inter these days. Why not jump on a plus 700? Cincinnati's plus 400. That's the only team favored more. LAFC is right there with them at plus 700. Let's dance with Leo. I'm betting with Messi. You guys take the rest. Okay. Good deal. It's your Betway bet of the day. Get the app on your phone. Ontario only 19 plus. Betway, bet the responsible way.